So remember I told you uh, up till now whatever log rules we did didn't require the anti-log table only required a log logic. After this the log rules that I am going to do is going to require taking an anti-log. Now what do you mean by an anti-log? Uh, when you square a number to nullify the square you take a square root. So square and square root nullify each other. When I divide, I multiply to nullify the effect. When I add, I subtract to nullify the effect. Similarly, if I want to, if I take a log, then to nullify the effect, I have to take an anti-log. How does anti-log go? Exactly like this, but reverse. You know what we will have now? We will have log of a certain number. And from here now, we have to come reverse. And I have to show you that the anti-log of 1.3729 is actually 23.6. Now to be able to do that, I need to have this understanding but in reverse. So I'm going to go forward and then I'm going to go reverse. You had a number 23.6, you had to take a log of it. You said there are two places before the decimal, so the characteristic is 1. You looked at the number without the decimal. When you looked at the number without the decimal, you got the mantisa. And then you brought the characteristic plus the mantisa together and you got a log. <laughs> now, this will be given to you and you have to show that the anti-log of this number is actually 23.6. Meaning, if I am giving you 1.3729, and I'm asking you to take an anti-log of it, which means this is a log of some number. Yes, it is the log of 23.6. So I have to take an anti-log of it. If it is a log of some number, then the part before the decimal is the characteristic and the part after the decimal is the mantisa. Don't confuse it by saying there is one place before the decimal, so 1 minus 1 is 0. Sorry. We are not taking a log of it. It is already a log of some number and we are decoding that. So where did 1.3729 come from? It came from the fact that 1 is the characteristic and 0 0.3729 is the mantisa. Where did the characteristic come from? number of places before the decimal minus 1. Then reverse. If the characteristic is 1, then can I say 1 plus 1, there were 2 places before the decimal, because 2 minus 1 gave you the characteristic, then 1 plus 1 will tell you how many places before the decimal. But sir, where will I put the decimal? In the number. Where will I get the number from? Well, here. Where did you get the mantisa from? You looked at the number without the decimal in the log table to get the mantisa. We will look at the mantisa in the anti-log table to get back the number but without the decimal. Once I have the number without the decimal and I know where to put the decimal, can I say if the number is 236 and there are two places before the decimal, the answer is 23.6. And what I have done is, I have given you another table, which is the anti-log table. So what I have done is, whatever logs you got here, I have written them as numbers in the next part. You notice? So this is the logarithm, for which I have to take an anti-log. 1.3729. 1.6212, 0 0.5575, 0 0.7723 and so on. Which means when I take an anti-log of these, when I finally have the anti-log of these numbers, what will this anti-log be? This anti-log will be nothing else but my original values. So it's basically going to be a full spread sheet where this is how it's going to be. I start with a number, take a log, and for the same number I take an anti-log and I get the original number back. And that is what we are going to do, again, in a table, one at a time. Like I gave you the sheet that had log in it, there is a sheet.
that has anti log in it also but before we start that let's come here this is a log of some number for which you have to take an anti log if this is the log of some number then the whole number part is the characteristic and the decimal number part is the mantissa so if this is the log of some number 1.3729 is the log of some number then this one which is the whole number part is the characteristic and this 0.3729 is the mantissa so my job is first going to be extracting whatever information i can from whatever is given to me so i am going to say number 1 if this is log of some number the whole number part is the characteristic so can i say the characteristic here is 1 the characteristic here is 1 the characteristic here is 0 if you notice there is no whole number part so 0 0 2 1 One, one, I'm going to repeat this. What are we doing? We are taking anti log. If you are taking anti log, this is log of some number which we have to break back, and we had done this in the beginning. How had we done this? We said that if so, we are going reverse. How are we going reverse? If I have to take an anti log of this, then it has two parts. This one is the characteristic and the point. Nine five two four is the mantissa, correct? So the whole number part, which is the one, is the characteristic, and the decimal part, which is the point nine five two four, is the mantissa. How did you get the characteristic? It was the number of places before the decimal minus one. How many places were there before the decimal? I'm sorry, I think I've made a mistake here. I'm sorry. Wherever you have written this, please make a change. Uh, by mistake, I wrote root three minus one as one. Please make that change. It is three minus one is two here. I am extremely sorry about that. I just noticed that now. So in the previous part also, so this becomes two point nine five two four. I'm extremely sorry. Please make that change. Sorry once again. 2.9524. I'm taking an anti-log of it, so which means the two is the characteristic and 0.9524 is the mantissa. So the two is the characteristic and the 0.9524 is the mantissa. Where did the characteristic come from? It is the number of places before the decimal minus one. So if two is the characteristic, then the number of places before the decimal was three. Where did you get the mantissa from? by looking at the table without the decimal by looking at the number in the table without the decimal then from the mantissa i will get back the original number but without the decimal is that right once i have the number without the decimal i know there have to be three places before the decimal then i'm going to say after three places put a decimal and that is 896. Three. <coughs> I'm sorry, and that is your original number. So, <clears throat> step number one: If this is log of a number, the part before the decimal, which is the whole number part, is the characteristic. And I've written down the characteristic. The part after the decimal is the mantissa. So I'm going to write down all the mantissas. 
जीरो पॉइंट थ्री सेवन टू नाइन जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स टू वन टू जीरो पॉइंट फाइव फाइव सेवन फाइव जीरो पॉइंट सेवन सेवन टू थ्री जीरो पॉइंट एट जीरो फोर एट जीरो पॉइंट एट सिक्स एट सिक्स जीरो पॉइंट नाइन जीरो नाइन सिक्स जीरो पॉइंट नाइन नाइन जीरो एट जीरो पॉइंट एट सिक्स सिक्स नाइन जीरो पॉइंट एट फोर जीरो वन जीरो पॉइंट एट वन वन सिक्स जीरो पॉइंट सेवन टू जीरो फोर जीरो पॉइंट सेवन नाइन जीरो सिक्स जीरो पॉइंट नाइन सिक्स फाइव फाइव जीरो पॉइंट फाइव थ्री सिक्स थ्री जीरो पॉइंट फोर वन सेवन थ्री जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स एट टू सेवन जीरो पॉइंट नाइन टू सेवन सेवन जीरो पॉइंट फाइव थ्री नाइन थ्री जीरो पॉइंट थ्री सेवन थ्री फोर जीरो पॉइंट एट सिक्स फोर थ्री जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स थ्री सिक्स टू जीरो पॉइंट एट जीरो एट फाइव जीरो पॉइंट नाइन फाइव वन जीरो एंड जीरो पॉइंट फाइव फाइव एट नाइन so once again i'm going to keep repeating this till you get this embedded in your head if this is log of a number then it has two parts the part before the decimal is the characteristic and the part after the decimal is the 90s where did you get the characteristic from well it was number of places before the decimal minus 1 so if i add 1 to the characteristic won't i get the number of places before the decimal so if your characteristic is 1 there were two places before the decimal if your characteristic is one two places before the decimal if your characteristic is zero one place before the decimal one place before the decimal three places before the decimal two 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 three two four three three four One, two, three, one, three, 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 five, two. If you are taking an anti-log of this, this is a log of some number, which means it has two parts. The whole number part is the characteristic, and the decimal part is the mantissa. The characteristic came from number of places before the decimal minus one. Then. The number of places before the decimal are characteristic plus one. So number of places before the decimal is characteristic plus one. Where did the mantissa come from? I looked at the number without the decimal in the log table for the mantissa. So if the number without the decimal gave me the mantissa, then the mantissa will give me back the number but without the decimal. So from the mantissa will come the number without the decimal. How? In the anti-log table. So I have given you a table with four sheets. The first two is log, and the last two or the next two is anti-log. I have a humble request: do not make a mistake of looking at log in anti-log and anti-log in log. Please. make sure that if you are taking a log you are looking in the log page if you are taking an anti log you are looking in the anti log page now there is something very peculiar about the anti log page and that is if you notice where the anti log starts from it starts from point 00 <clears throat> you know what that means it means that anti log is only taken for the decimal part and that is why anti log is only taken for the mantissa so it starts from point 00 and goes to the next page bottom right up till point 9 9 and you will look for it exactly in the same way like you looked to log nothing different be ready with a small scale in your hand we are looking for The anti-log of point three seven two nine. So 
in the antilog section i will first look for 0.37 so 0.37 is somewhere here keep your scale horizontal under 0.37 it is 0.3729 again the same if you notice the first column is 0 the second is 1 and the third is 2 so 0 1 2 0.372 is 2355 keep that in mind and then 9 9 is 5 add that here 2355 plus 5 is 2360 and there you have it the number without the decimal is 2360 I am going to quickly repeat this. We are taking anti-log. If you are taking anti-log of a number, it has two parts. The part with, before the decimal, which is the whole number part, is the characteristic. While the part after the decimal is the mantisa. Where did you get the characteristic from? Well, the characteristic came from the number of places before the decimal minus 1. So if you add 1 to the characteristic, you will get the number of places before the decimal. Where did the mantisa come from? It came from looking at the number without the decimal in the log sheet. So where will the, what will the mantisa give you then? The mantisa will give you back the number without the decimal in the anti-log sheet. So you look for the mantisa 0.3729. So the same way like you were looking for log, first two digits in the first column, next in the next and next in the next. 0.37, so under 0.37, You look for 2, 2355, five, and in that you look for 9 is 5, 2355 five plus 5 is 2360. So the number without the decimal is 2360. But if the characteristic was 1, the number of places before the decimal was 2. So from the left, start counting 2 places. 1 place, 2 place. 2 places before the decimal. Then my number is 23.60. Quickly go back and check. Is whatever your answer a correct value? Yes, it is 23.6. 23.6 and 23.60 is the same number. So whatever I have done is correct. Let's go back. 0 0.6212. The anti-log of 1.6212, 1 is the characteristic, 0.6212 is the mantisa. If 1 is the characteristic, number of places before the decimal is 2. I will now look for the mantisa in the table, 0.6212. So, 0 0.6212, 0 0.62. One two, so this is point six two zero. This is point six two one, which is four one seven eight. In that I add two point six two one two. Two is two. First column, second column. Two plus four one seven eight will give you four one eight zero. That is my number without the decimal, and that is four one eight. 0. But the characteristic is 1. So there are 2 places before the decimal which means the number is 41.80. Let's check if that was my original number. Yes, that was my original number 41.8. Which means whatever I am doing is correct. I hope you are getting a hang of it. I am going to do this now but slightly faster. What you can do is you can start doing it by yourself and then cross checking. The next few numbers I am going to show it to you. So if you are finding it difficult to uh, see here or it's not legible, I am going to show it to you in the PDF on the video itself. So 0.5575 characteristic is 0. Number of places before the decimal is 1. Mantis says 0.5575. Let's 
and look for 0.5575 in your sheets. So, this is the first two pages. So, the first page is log, the second page is log. We come to the third page. What are we looking for? We are looking for 0.5575. So, go to the last page. In the last page, 0.55. Correct? So, let me do one thing. Let me highlight that for you. 0.55. Sorry. Let me erase that. Point five five. In that, I have to look for seven. So let me unzoom a little so that I can draw this line here. Perfect. Point five five seven, and in that, I'm going to look for a five. So this is 0 0.557 which is 3606 and in that I add the 4. So this becomes 3606 plus 4 which becomes 3610. So let me write that down for you. 3610. So this becomes 3610. But the characteristic was 0 which means there needs to be one place before the decimal. So this is 3.610. <clears throat> now let's continue. 0.7723. In your log sheets, 0 0.7723. 0 0.772. 2. 0, 1, 2. 5, 9, 1, 6. To that, I add 3. So, 1, 2, 3. 3 is 4. So, this becomes 5, 9, 1, 6 plus 4, which is 5, 9, 2, 0. So, this will become 5, 9, 2, 0. Characteristic is 0. One place before the decimal, 5.920. 0. 0. 0.8048. 0. 0.80. 4. In that I am going to look for 8. So 6368 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is 12. 6368 plus 12 is going to be 8 plus 2 is 10. You can do this in the calculator. I am doing it by heart. Doesn't mean you have to. Sometimes even I make mistakes. So if you are not confident, do it in the calculator, no problem. 6368 plus the 12 is going to be 8 plus 2 is 10, 789. So it's going to be 6390. So it is, uh, sorry, 6380. So this is going to be 6380. But three places before the decimal, so it is going to be 638.0. Let's go to the next one, 0.8686. So under 0.86, I'm going to look for 8 and in that I'm going to look for 6. So 0 0.86. 0 0.86, 8. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Or you can go from down also because I can't show you the top. So your 8 is 7362. So if you want to finish this in the calculator faster, go into the calculator 7362 if I am right. Uh, 
In that we are looking at six. So one, two, three, four, five, six is ten. So plus the ten is going to be seven, three, eight, nine. So this is going to be seven, three, eight, nine. The characteristic was two, so there have to be three. Uh, sorry, the characteristic was one. So two places before the decimal, seven, three point eight nine. Now let me show you something. Let me show you what the original number was. You know the original number was the original number was seventy-three point nine. But do you notice that seventy-three point eight nine is very close to seventy-three point nine? So sometimes you don't get the exact value. You get a little smaller or a little greater value, which is okay. There's no problem with it. Now what I want you to do is, and I want you to pause the video here with a pencil. Try to do the entire thing by yourself. Unpause it and then check if whatever you have done and I have done is correct or not. Or, like I said, you have this sheet with you. This should be your answer. So you can cross check here also. But I want you to try this by yourself. I'm going to do it myself. You pause the video and try it by yourself. The next is point nine zero nine six. So point nine zero. Sorry. In point nine zero, I am looking for nine. Point nine zero nine is going to be eight one one zero. So eight one one zero. Point nine zero nine six. So one two three four five six. This is six, which is eleven. So add the eleven to it, and you get eight one two one. So eighty one twenty one. Let's write down eighty one twenty one. Characteristic is one. Two places before the decimal. So eighty one point twenty. Eight one point two one. Point nine nine zero eight. So for point nine nine zero eight. Point nine nine zero and eight is eighteen, so it is going to be nine seven seven two plus the eighteen, which is nine seven nine zero. It's going to be nine seven nine zero two, so nine seven point nine zero. Let's go to the next. Point eight six six nine. Point eight six. So in point eight six, I am looking for six seven three four five. In that I am looking for nine, which is fifteen. So it is seven three four five plus fifteen is seven three six zero. So this is going to be seven three six zero. Two places before the decimal, seven three point six zero. Next, point eight four zero one. So under point eight four, I'm going to look for zero. Point eight four zero is six nine one eight. Point eight four zero. Sorry. Point eight four zero one. Point eight four zero is six nine one eight, and in that one is two. So six nine one eight plus two is going to be six nine two zero. So this is going to be six nine two zero. Characteristic is one, so two places before the decimal. So this is going to be six nine point two zero. Point eight one one six eighty one sixteen. So eighty one sixteen. Eighty one one six four seven one six six is going to be 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9. 6, 4, 8, 0. There are three places before the decimal. So, 6, 4, 8, point 0. Point 7, 2, 0, 4. Point 7, 2, 0, 5, 2, 4, 8. Point 7, 2, 0, 4, if I am right, yes. Point 5, 2, 7, 2, 0, 4. 4 is going to be 5. Correct? Yes. Plus 5 is going to be 5253. Five, Let me check that once again. Point 0.7204. Correct. Point 0.7204. 5253. Five, so 5253. Two places before the decimal. So 52.53. Five, point five, Next. Point 0.7906. So under point 0.79. Point 0.79. Zero six one six six six. So six one six six plus six. Six is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, nine. Six one seven five. So point seven nine zero six. Point seven nine zero and then six, which is nine. So it's going to be 6175. Four places before the decimal. So this is going to be 6175.0. Let's go to the next point 9655. Point 96. Five nine two two six five and five is one two three four five two three nine two three seven three places before the decimal. 923.7 plus 2 Three four three eight. Three four three eight. Three places before the decimal. Three four three point eight. Next point four one seven three. We'll have to go one page back because it's point four one. Point four one. Always make sure you're looking in the anti log table. Anti log decimal. Point four one seven three. Point four one seven. Two six one two three is two. So this becomes two six one four. Point four one seven three. Correct. Two six one four. Four places before the decimal. So this is going to be two six one four point zero. Next is point six eight two seven. So we again have to turn the page. 
point six eight two seven. So in point six eight. Two four eight zero eight seven eight four eight zero eight plus eight is going to be four eight one six. One place before the decimal four point eight one six point nine two seven seven. Point nine two seven seven fourteen. So eight four five three plus fourteen. Eight four five three plus fourteen. Eight four six seven. Two places before the decimal. Eight four point six seven point five three nine three point five three point five three nine three four five eight point I'm sorry point five three nine three. Point five three nine three four five nine three is two three four six one point five three nine three point five three nine three three four six one three places before the decimal three four six point one. Point three four three seven in point three four three seven point three four three seven under point three four three two two zero three seven four. So two two zero three plus seven two two one zero point three seven three four. Sorry, I made a mistake there. Point three seven three four. It is not three four three seven. Point three seven three four. So point three seven three, which is basically two three six zero four two two three six zero plus two is two three six two. One place before the decimal, two point three six two point eight six four three in point eight six four three eighty six four three eighty six four three eighty six four three eighty six four. Zero one two three four. So seven three one one. Eighty six four three. Three is going to be one two three plus five. Seven three one six. Seven three one six. Three places before the decimal. Seven three one point six. Let's come to the next point six three six two. Point six three six is going to be four three two five 
two is going to be two is going to be four three two seven. So point six three. Six two point six three six two yes point six three six two is going to be four three two seven point eight zero eight five sorry three places before the decimal four three two point seven point eight zero eight five point eight zero Eight five six four two seven five one two three four five seven six four two seven plus seven six four two seven plus seven is six four three four so this is point eight zero eight five. Point eight zero eight five is six four three four three places before the decimal, so six four three point four. Point nine five one zero. Point nine five. Point nine five one zero. So in point nine five, I will look for one. Point nine five one is eight nine three three. There is no zero, so eight nine three three. So it's going to be eight nine three three. There are five places before the decimal. Is that correct? So I don't have five places. I will have to create a fifth place. How am I going to do that? What do you mean by creating a fifth place? Put a zero. That will make it a fifth place. Because I need five places. Eight nine three three zero. Now, because you put a zero here, the original number could be anything. So there is going to be a vast difference between the two. So, but that's okay. We can only recover four digits. We can't recover like we can only look for four digits. We can only recover four. So it's not your fault. It is not your problem. This is correct. Let's come to the last one. Point five five eight nine. Under point five five eight. Eight is three six one four. Nine is seven. Point five five eight nine. I'm sorry, keep forgetting these. Point five five eight nine. Yes. Point five five eight nine. So three six one four plus seven. Three six two point. Two places before the decimal, so three six point two one, and that's your answer. What we are expecting is that these to be your original values in your original table that was given to you. So let's do one thing. Let's quickly check if that is right. So what I'm going to do is to make this easier. I'm going to fold this along the line so that it's easier to check. And the numbers are very close to each other. Sorry, I think I went too far. So place them together, and there will be a few places where there is a little bit of a difference, but that's okay, not a problem. And check if you've gotten what the original number was. And that is how you take an anti log. So I'm going to do a quick recap, and then I'm going to take random anti logs without the table. So uh, let's go back to our tree diagram or our bifurcation here. I have to take an anti log of 2.9524. So 2 is the characteristic, 0.9524 is the anti sign. The characteristic came from number of places before the decimal minus one. So I know that there are three places before the decimal because characteristic is two. The mantisa point nine five two four comes from looking at the number without the decimal. 
So the mantissa will give you back the number without the decimal by looking in the anti-log sheet. So you want to verify this? 0.9524, what does it give you? 0.9524. In 0.95, we are looking for 2. 2 is 8954. Plus 4, which is 6. You get 8960. So 0.952. And 4. Sorry, I think I made a mistake. 0.952 is 8954. Plus 4. 4 is 8. Is 0.952 is 89. Five four plus eight is eight nine six two, and is that true? Yes. There is a one decimal change, which is like I said, is okay. So eight nine six two, and the decimal should be two places. So the answer is eight nine six point two. But the answer is point three, which I told you one the one decimal place change here and there is not a problem, and that is how you take an anti log. What we are going to do next is, I am going to write down random numbers. We are going to quickly take log and quickly take anti-log without actually having to draw the entire table. So, let's take this. Let's not waste too many pages. What if you are asked to find the log of, uh, let's say, 8.631. You will say one place before the decimal, 1 minus 1 is 0. This is my characteristic. Plus the mantissa will be 0 point something. Where will I get the mantissa? By looking at the number without the decimal in the log table. Number without the decimal is 8631. So let's go to the log table. Now remember, do not look in the anti-log. We are taking log. So we have to look in the log table. Correct? What do we have to look for? 8631, 8631. So in the log table, 86. So put your scale horizontal under 86. 31. This is 3, which is 9360, and 1 is 1. So 9361. So 9361 is going to be the answer. 9361. So it is 0 0.9361. Now if I ask you to take an anti-log of this, so anti-log of, anti-log is only written as 80. 80 means anti-log. 0 0.9361 is equal to, what will the anti-log of this be? It should be 8.631. But how will I get it? The value before the decimal should be the characteristic. So the characteristic is 0. If the characteristic is 0, how many places before the decimal? 1. But don't write that down. Keep it in your mind that there will be 1 place before the decimal and let it be. What is the mantissa? The decimal part. 0 0.9361. The mantissa will give me back the number without the decimal. But remember to look in the anti-log bit and not the log bit. 0 0.9361. So under 0.93. I will look for 6 and in that I will look for 1. So 0 0.936 is going to be 8630 and 1 is 2. So 8632. So this is going to be 8632. Characteristic is 0 which means there needs to be 1 place before the decimal. So 8.632 which is very close to 8.631. So like I said. This is how you take log and anti-log. And now because uh, I have shown you how to take log in your calculators. Remember, I gave it to you in writing as to how does one take log in your calculator. You type the number. You press the root sign 15 times. You subtract 1 from it. After subtracting 1, 
you will say divided by 0 0.00070271 and that is going to be the anti log just hold on for a second let me find the sheet so i found the sheet and this is what i gave you in writing to find any log to the base 10 type the number in your calculator press the root sign 15 times subtract 1 and divide it by 0 0.00070271 you want to verify that for uh, the value that we just did which was the log of point 8.631 so in your calculators no matter what calculator it is uh, it's a double into single into remains the same 8.631 so 8.631 root sign 15 times 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 subtract one from it divided by 0 0.00070271 0 0.9360 or if you approximate this then 0 0.9361 that's the closest and you have a 0 0.9361 now what if you want to take an anti-log do the exact reverse if you want to find the anti-log of this go reverse in the log first you are dividing multiply subtracting add taking a root 15 times press into equal to 15 times so if you are asked to take an anti-log what are you going to do you are going to do the exact reverse of what you did here so step one is going to be type the number step two is going to be multiply by 0 0.00000 70271 step 3 is going to be add 1 and step 4 is going to be the root sign 15 times is going to become into equal to that combination 15 thanks let's check if this verifies for this value which is anti log of 0 0.9361 is it 8.6321 so 0 0.9361 0 0.9361 correct step one is multiplied by 0 0.00070271 perfect add one plus one and now do into equal to 15 times not into equal to equal to 15 times into equal to 15 times now i can't hold the calculator like this so i'm going to put it down and 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 6 sorry 15 0.83 0.8.631 isn't that your anti log anywhere 8.631 and this is how you take anti log in your calculator if you want to verify this what you can do is the sheet that we have taken logs in anti logs in like just some time ago the table what you can do is you can start checking the same table for anti logs so i will do one for you and then you can do whatever so i'm doing this which is let's say anti log of one point uh, 72 or let's do this 2.8116 let's see what the answer is 2.8116 correct step 1 multiplied by 0 0.00070271 add 1 and now do into equal to 15 times 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Your answer is 647.72. So 647.72 is approximately 648. So my answer is correct. And this is how you can take antilogs in your calculators. If you understood how to take antilogs, 
let's come to the last three rules which will then give us the liberty to start the chapter we now come to the last three rules of logarithms that i want to do the first rule says that logarithms changes multiplication to addition how i will tell you let's understand the let's look at the rule first the understanding i will let you know if i am taking a log of some number a into some number b at some base x then this multiplication is changed to addition by logarithms and this becomes log of a to the base x plus log of b to the base x how is going to use be use how is it going to be of any use to us multiplication so mathematics has four important calculations addition subtraction multiplication division addition subtraction is easy multiplication division is a problem so because logarithm changes multiplication to addition it becomes easier to simplify something so let's take an example and do this suppose i ask you to find the value of some p and what is this p uh, let's say this p is something that i can do in the calculator so let's say this p is 23.5 into uh, 6.2 i can do this in the calculator i agree but what if you can't do this you don't have a calculator I want you to do this using logarithms. So if it is multiplication, logarithms can change multiplication to division. So I am going to say taking multiplication to addition, sorry, taking log on both sides to the base 10. Because I have a to the base 10 log table. So I am going to say log p is log p to the base 10 is log of 23.5 into 6.2 to the base 10 logarithms can change multiplication to addition so doesn't that become log of p to the base 10 is log of 23.5 into 6.2 according to the log rule will become log of 23.5 to the base 10 plus log of 6.2 to the base 10. In the next step, log p to the base 10 is log of 23.5. How do you take log? Two places before the decimal, minus 1 is 1. Point, I will write the 90 sign off. Number without the decimal is 235. So in my log sheet, not in the anti-log, in my log sheet, I will look for 23 and in 23 I will look for 5. So this is 23 and in 23 the 5 is 3711. So I am going to say 235 is 3711 plus 6.2. One place before the decimal, minus one is zero, point. Without the decimal, the number is 62. So under 62, I am going to look for zero. What is 62, zero? 62 is going to be on the next page. Under 62, I am going to look for zero. 62, zero is 7924. So this is going to be 7924. We add the two. 1.3711 plus 0.7924 add you will get 5 3 9 16 11 2 it becomes 2.1635 you can do it in the calculator log of p to the base 10 is 2.1635 but I didn't ask you to find the value of log p. I asked you to find the value of p, not log p. Find them. I will take an anti-log to nullify the effect. Taking 
एंटी लॉग ऑन बोथ साइड आई गेट एंटी लॉग ऑफ लॉग पी इज एंटी लॉग ऑफ टू पॉइंट वन सिक्स थ्री फाइव एंटी लॉग ऑफ लॉग पी इज पी बिकॉज लॉग एंड एंटी लॉग नलिफाई द इफेक्ट एंटी लॉग ऑफ टू पॉइंट वन सिक्स थ्री फाइव If I'm taking anti log of this, then this is log of some number. And if it, this is log of some number, the whole number part is the characteristic, and the decimal part is the ninety sum. If the characteristic is two, two plus one is three. There are three places before the decimal. If the ninety sum is point one six three five, then I am going to look for. Point one six three five in the anti log. In point one six, I will look for three. In that, I will look for five. Point one six, I am going to look for three. In point one six, three is one four five five. So point one six three. In that three, I am going to look for five. So point one six three five. Five is two, so it is one four five seven. So this is going to be one four five seven. Is the number without the decimal? Characteristic is two. Two plus one is three, so it has to be one forty five point seven. Let's check if that is the correct answer. I multiplied twenty three point five with six point two. and the answer is 145.7 which means whatever i have done is correct and this is how logarithms changes multiplication to addition and log of a into b to some base x will become log a to the base x plus log of b to the base x like multiplication logarithm changes division to subtraction multiplication is changed to addition division is changed to subtraction how if you are asked to take the log of a by b to some base x then this becomes log of a to the base x minus log of b to the base x let's verify if this is correct If I ask you to find the value of q, what is q? Q is let's say one forty five point three divided by let's say fifteen point four. Now, like I said, I can do this in the calculator also, but I want to do this using logarithms. So I am going to say taking log. on both sides to the base 10 i get log of q to the base 10 is log of 145.3 divided by 15.4 to the base 10 which further becomes log of q to the base 10 is when two values are dividing logarithm changes division to subtraction so this is log of 145.3 to the base 10 minus log of 15.4 to the base 10 which in the next step becomes log of q to the base 10 is log of 145.3 three places before the decimal minus 1 is 2 point 1453 1453 without the decimal so under 14 i will look for 5 sorry under 14 i will look for 5 in that i will look for 3 so 14 5 and 3 is 9 so it's going to be 16 14 plus 9 So, sixteen, 
14 plus 9 is 1, 4, 5, 3. Perfect. Is 1, 6, 2, 3. So I'm going to write this down. Is 0. 0.1623 minus log of 15 two places before the decimal minus 1 is 1 point 154 15 I will look for 4 under 15 I will look for 4 18575 5. so 1875 I will subtract the two I can do it actually but I'm going to finish this off quickly in the calculator 2.1623 minus 1.1875 is 0 0.9748 so this is the log of q to the base 10 is 0 0.9748 but did i ask you to find the log of q no i asked you to find the value of q so for that i will have to take anti log Anti log of log q to the base 10 is anti log of 0 0.9748. Log and anti log nullify the effect. Q is equal to 0.9748 in your anti log sheet. 0.9748 under 0.97. I am going to look for 4. So 0.97. I am going to look for 4, 0.974 and in that I am going to look for 8 is 17. So 9419 plus 17, 9419 plus 17 is 9436. So this is 9436 but characteristic is 0 plus 1. So one place before the decimal. So it is 9.436. I can do this in the calculator also. Let's try that. 145.3 divided by 15.4. 145.3 divided by 15.4 gives you a 9.4350. So 9.43. 9.4350 which is 9.436 which is correct and this is how logarithms changes division to subtraction one last rule and that is logarithms if i take a log of sum a raised to some value let's say x or let's say b Logarithms has the power to bring down a power as a coefficient. This can be written as b log a. If this was to the base 10, then this is also 10. So if this was to the base x, this is also to the base x. Let's use this log rule and find the power of something. So you will say, sir, I can, we can find powers in our calculator also. I agree. But there are still some powers that you can't find in the calculator. For example, if I ask you to find 5 raised to 2.8, you can't do that. You can do 5 raised to 2 in your calculator. You can do 5 raised to 3. You can't do 2.8. So for now, I'm going to find a power which I understand, which is easy for me to find, so that it's easier to check in the calculator. If I ask you to find the value of R, what is R? R is, let's say, uh, 3.5 raised to 2 4 so I'm going to say I don't I can't do this so I'm taking log on both sides log to the base 10 of r is log to the base 10 of 3.5 raised to 4 so this becomes log r to the base 10 is this 4 comes down according to the log rule 4 log of 3.5 to the base 10. So this will become log of r to the base 10 is 4. Log of 3.5. One place before the decimal. 
minus 1 is 0. Point. 3.5 without the decibel is 35. So in my log sheet, I am going to look for 35, 0. So in my log sheet, I am going to look for 35, 0. 5, 4, 4, 1. So this is 5, 4, 4, 1. Multiply 4 into 0 0.5441 will give you a 2.1764 is the log of R with the base 10. Taking anti log on both sides, anti log of log R to the base 10 is anti log of 2.1764. Log and anti log nullify the effect. R is equal to the anti log of 2.1764. How do you take anti log? Characteristic is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. So 3 places before the decimal. But where will I put the decimal? You will check for the number using the mantisa. So I am going to look for 0.1764 in my calculator, in my anti log sheet. So 0.1764. In my anti log sheet, I am looking for 0.17. In that, I am going to look for 6. In that, I am going to look for 4. 0.17. In that, I am going to look for 6. I am going to look for 0 0.1764. 0 0.17. 6. 4 is 1. So it's going to be 1501. So it's going to be 1501. One. Characteristic is 2. So I'm going to put 3 places before the decimal. And the answer is 150.1. Let's check what 3.5 raised to 4 is. So 3.5 raised to 4. 2, 3, 4. Is 150.0625. But we get 4 digits. So we get 150.1. That's the answer. So we have, I have shown you three very important log rules that can be understood only if you understand anti-log as to how they work. Now I'm going to explain to you how this works. Like for example, when you tell me that when I'm multiplying these two, correct? And then take a, I take a log. So whatever I'm going to say now, if you understand, fantastic. If you don't, don't stress yourself too much. This is just extra knowledge that I'm providing. When I'm multiplying these two, so I'm going to write them down. So I'm going to multiply. So P is 23.5 into 6.2. You know, when I took a log of 23.5 and I got 1.3711. So let me write this here, log of... 23.5 to the base 10 is 1.3711. You know what I've basically done? According to this, if I change this to 10 raised to 1.3711, I should get the value 23.5. So 10 raised to 1.3711 is equal to 23.5. Similarly, when I take a log of 6.2 and I get 0 0.7924 you know what that means when I say log of 6.2 to the base 10 is 0 0.7924 I get 10 raised to 0 0.7924 is 6.2 when 10 is raised to 0 0.7924 I get 6.2 so in other words, don't I have a replacement for 23.5 and 6.2 as 10? So let me write that replacement. It will be wrong if I say let P be equal to 10.13711 is replaced for 23.5. So this becomes 10 raised to 1.3711 into... 6.2 can be replaced by 10 raised to 0 0.7924. Laws of indices. When two values are multiplying, bases are the same, powers can add. 
So P becomes 10 raised to 1.3711 plus 0 0.7924. And the two powers adding? And the two powers adding here? So when you write it as log, you are writing them as powers of 10. And if both are powers of 10, both can add. And that is how logarithms changes multiplication to addition. And then you continue. When you add, you get P is equal to 10 raised to 2.1635. And basically, anti-log tells you what the value of 10 raised to 2.1635 is, which works out to be taking anti-log 145.7 which is common sense 10 square is 100 and then 0.1635 which means a little over 100 which is 145.7 like I said if you don't understand it's okay what I want you to understand is this is the log rule what happens in division so when in division can I say if I'm asking you to divide these two this can be replaced by the log value which is basically 10 raised to 2.1623 and this can be replaced by 10 raised to 1.1875 and then can I say when two values are dividing bases are the same powers can subtract so becomes 10 raised to 2.1623 minus 1.1875 isn't the two powers subtracting which eventually becomes 10 raised to 0 0.9748 and when you are raising 10 to a number which is less than 1 10 raised to 1 is 10 then the value has to be less than 10 and the value is 9.436 slightly less than 10 and the last rule is frankly very easy to explain like how does log bring powers down I will tell you. When you say log of, let's say a cube, according to rules of logarithms, this 3 comes down. You know why it comes down? Common sense. Can I say log of a cube is nothing else but a into a into a? And doesn't log change multiplication to addition and make it log of a plus log of a plus log of a? But what is log a plus log a plus log a? 3 times of log a. And that becomes log of a cube. Log of a cube is basically 3 log a. And right now I have shown you 3 log rules. What I am going to do now is almost all the log rules are over apart from a few standards. And before I move into the standards, I am going to go to a fresh page now. So after whatever this is that you have written, you are going to come to a fresh page and we are going to write down all the log rules that we've done up till now. So I want you to come to a fresh page. The first and the most basic log rule that we did was, if I have log of A to the base B is equal to C, what that actually means is that when B is raised to A, B is raised to C, sorry, I get the value A. So this implies that B raised to C is A. This is the logarithmic relationship between A, B and C. And this is the exponential relationship between A, B and C. This is log rule number 1. After having done this, we came to the next log rule. And that is the change of base theorem. And that was, if I have a log of a to the base b, I can write this as log a divided by log b. And now the base can be anything. I can write it as 4, 4, 5, 5, 10, 10. But uh, when I was using a log table, the base was 10. But then I don't know what kind of questions I will have. So I'm going to say, if you write an x here, this is also an x here. So log of a to the base x is equal to divided by log of b to the base x is the second log rule that we did from the beginning after having done this we did the three log rules by understanding uh, anti-logarithm which was if I have log of a into b to some base x logarithms changes multiplication to 
addition if i have log of a by b to some base x logarithms changes division to subtraction and if i have log of a raised to b to some base x this becomes b log a to the base x now after this we are going to do three standards standard number 1 log of a number a to the same base a is always 1 why because a is the first power of a i have told you this a is always the first power of a and that is why log a to the base a is always 1 the second standard that we are going to do and before i write it down i am going to prove the standard to you so that it's easier log of the number 1 to let's say if the base is 10 what will be the log of 1 then well let's go back if log of 1 to the base 10 is some value let's say x i have to find this x If I am changing this from the logarithmic form to the exponential form, ten raised to x will give me one. Ten raised to x will give me one. Question: What value should I raise ten to to get one? Simple. There is no value. Zero is the only value. Ten raised to zero gives you one, and that is why if ten raised to x is one. 10 raised to x can be written as 10 raised to 0 and that implies that x has to be 0 which means that log of 1 to the base 10 is always 0 well let me stop you right there what if i write another value log of 1 to the base 6 is what well let it be a value y then 6 raised to y should give me 1 if 6 raised to y is 1 Six raised to what is one? Again, six raised to zero is one. Any number raised to zero is one. Then, if six raised to zero is one, that implies that y has to be zero, which means log of one to the base six is zero. Or can I again say this? What is log? It is the power of the base. What power of six is one? The zero power of six is one. What power of ten is one? The zero power of ten is one. But then the zeroth power of any number is one, and that is why log of one to any base, no matter what the base is, is always and always zero. So we come back and we write this down in the log rule under standard rules, and that that is log of the number one, no matter what the base is. Is always and always zero. Once we've written this, a lot of people start asking the question: What do you mean by any base? I mean any base is any base. Any base, no problem. Will always have to be zero. Fine then. Let's come to what is log of zero. Fine. Let's come to our explanation sheet. Log of zero, let's say to the base ten, is some value x. Ten, when raised to x, should give me zero. So ten raised to x is zero. My question to you is, what should I raise ten to to get the value zero? It's impossible. you can never raise 10 to anything to make it zero you can't raise something to something to make it zero people say sir zero are but 10 raised to zero is one not zero i want to make it zero no value of x will make 10 a zero and that is why this calculation in mathematics is a calculation that is not defined and no matter what the base is you cannot make any number a zero and that is why the log of 0 to any base is always a value which is not defined in mathematics so we come back and we say log of 0 to any base is a value which is not defined in 
mathematics. We come to one last and that is what if I ask you the log of minus 6 to the base 10 is what? So let me say that log of minus 6 to the base 10 is some value x again. Then 10 raised to x should give me a minus 6. Question. Can I raise 10 and make it negative? Never. You can never raise a positive number and make it negative at some point in time. And that is why this x again is a value that is not defined. And that is why the last standard and that is log of a negative value to any base is not defined in mathematics. Now the moment I write this down, which is log a to the base a is 1, log 1 to any base is 0, and log 0 to any base is not defined, a lot of students immediately jump up and ask the first question. And that is, sir, then what about log of 0 to the base 0? This puts me in a fix. Why does this put you in a fix? Well, I'll tell you why this puts me in a fix because now this is a collaboration of two log rules. If I don't look at the base, I say log of 0 is not defined. And if I look at 0 to the base 0, isn't this of the type log a to the base a? Then shouldn't this be 1? No, it should not be. I want you to understand the concept of logarithms. What is a log? It is a power of the base. So remember when we said that this log table is all powers of 10. What does that mean? That I'm raising 10 to these different powers and getting different numbers. I am raising 10 to different powers and creating different numbers. Isn't that right? I was raising 10 to different powers. Where did that go? I was raising 10 to different powers and getting different numbers. Can I raise 0 to any power to get a different number? No. I can never do that. 0 can never be raised to a power to get a different number. 0 is any power is still 0. And that is why you will never ever be asked a question where a base is 0. Because 0 is any power is 0. You can never ever create a log table with the base 0. Similarly, you can never ever create a log table with the base 1. You know why? Because one's any power is still going to be 1. You won't get different numbers. You will just get 1's everywhere. And that is why you will never have log tables that will have bases, zeros and 1's. And that is why you will never have a question that will ask you log of a number to the base 0 or to the base 1. So here log of a to the base is 1, log of a to any base. Now when I say any, don't include 0 and 1 in it. You will never have a log table to the base 0 and 1. Any, you will never have a log table to the base 0 and 1. You will never have a log table to the base 0 and 1. Is not defined and not defined. These are the basic rules of logarithms that I want you to know to be able to start questions because without this you will not be able to start questions and now let me tell you one thing I could have started the chapter by writing down these log rules and telling you to mug them up and start the chapter but I didn't want to do that I want you to, to understand what a log is and then continue so I have literally wasted around four and a half hours of lectures into explaining how to take a log only and only so that you understand these log rules. Question number one. Will we ever have to take a log in the exam? Never. You don't have to take logs. You don't have to take anti-logs. You will never be given a log table in your exam. You will never be expected or asked to take a log. So don't worry. I taught you this because I wanted you to understand how a log is taken so that this and a lot of other basics are understood. Then you don't have to mug them up. You've understood it. Any basic question asked, you can answer. So it's a humble request. Even though you will never be asked to take a log ever, 
I still want you to go back, learn this again properly so that understanding all this becomes much easier. And with these basic log rules, we can start questions. So whenever you start questions now, I want you to leave two or three pages and then start questions because there will still be a few more log rules that are standard, a few that are not standard, which we are going to define for our benefit, which we are going to write your like laws of indices or ratios as and how we come to a question, we come and write down that rule. So I want you to understand these basic rules. Log of A to the base B is C, B raised to C is A is the logarithmic to the exponential form. Log of A to the base B, change of base theorem, please write here, this is the change of base theorem. Log of A to the base B is log A to the base X, log B to the base X. Log of A into B is log A plus log B, log of A by B is log A minus log B and log of A raised to B is B log A. Log of a number to the same base is always 1. Log of 1 to any base is always 0 and log of 0 to any base is not defined. Log of a negative value to any base is not defined. And with this we can start the chapter logarithms with any small things and yes, we've learned how to take a log in your calculators. In your calculators, type the number, uh, press the, but this is only to the base 10. Type the number, press the root sign 15 times, subtract 1, divided by 0 0.00070271. For anti-log reverse, type the number, multiply it by 0 0.00070271. Add 1 to it, press into is equal to 15 times. One last time, I won't take up too much of the time. I know I've repeated this over and over and over again a little too many times. But I hope you understand why I am doing this so that this becomes easier to understand later. And uh, if you know what it means, then you know how a log rule is applied. Log of a number has two parts. One part is the characteristic, the other is the mantisa. The characteristic you decide which is the number of places before the decimal minus one. Mantisa comes from the table. Characteristic is always a whole number value. Mantisa is always a decimal value. Then you bring them together, characteristic plus mantisa, and then you get your answer. Anti-logarithm will be reverse. You are never going to have to do this in your exam. But like I said, it is very important for me to explain it to you because that's my job I like I said more than doing only questions I want you to understand the concept if you understand the concept a lot of things will become easier so with taking log in your calculator taking anti-log in your calculator and understanding the first few basic log rules I think we are done with log rules and we can move into questions so please 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 revise this over and over again at least once and now mug up the log rules that we've done just some time ago so that uh, whenever we have to use them, you have them in your mind and we are going to write few more log rules after this. So yes, having done this, we will begin with questions.